Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, November 6, 2017. I hope everybody had a great weekend. Um, I wanted to do an overview of the broad markets here, a very brief overview, and then just roll into a couple of the trade ideas, uh, some trade ideas, individual sectors or stocks that might stand out right now. Uh, as potential trading ops. Uh, the broad market, not not a whole lot new to report. Uh, again, everything that's been covered recently, uh, we're looking at the NDX here. You know, it's all about the NASDAQ. We all know that by now. It's all about tech. You know, the broad market, if you look at the S&P 500 or the SPY, uh, you know, it just grinds higher in this extremely low volatility range. And as far as swing trading ops, they're virtually nil. Uh, about the only thing you can do in this market, it's a trending market, uh, is, you know, buy uh, pullbacks to support. Like you had a little breakout here when we came on that support level. But right now we're in no man's land. We're, we're, uh, there's not any support until we get down to these levels. And, uh, you know, they still have those same big divergences building. And what stands out to me the most, uh, go back to the NDX again, because that's a leading index. You can see the divergent high and all this stuff. Um, but what stands out let me show you a board without any annotations so here here's the ndx pushing to new all-time highs today and we all know what happened last week uh, over the last two weeks we had all five things stocks report culminating in apple thursday after the bell um now if we look at the ndx e which i've mentioned here we can see that the index E, the equal weighted NASDAQ 100, is not at all-time highs. Now, it's not far from all-time highs, but what does that mean? Well, it, again, it shows the, the you know a, a very stark um, outperformance uh, of these overweighted mega cap names that have been single-handedly, well, metaphorically, so not literally, but doing most of the heavy lifting in the markets. Now, you might say, well, that's okay. That's normal. They're, they're big companies. They're the market leaders. Well, if we look at the NASDAQ 100, let's just jump back again to the NDX. So this is the uh, the regular NASDAQ 100, which puts a uh, much heavier weighting on those top components. And you can see we're at all-time highs. So let's just look at the previous peaks. We had a peak right here on uh, July 27th. You can see this red candle. Let's circle it for you. Make sure you see what I'm looking at. There is a peak in the market. Here was a peak in the market. I can tell you that date back there was... Uh, June 9th. So we had June 9th and July 27th. Now we look at the NDX equal weighted and it was moving up roughly in sync with the NASDAQ 100. You can see they both peaked on July 27th before correction and June 9th. Uh, so this is normal healthy price action when you have the majority of the stocks in an index going up and confirming those highs. So once again, the NASDAQ equal weighted index confirmed those highs and they were just highs for, you know, before a correction or pullbacks. Uh, in fact, the two biggest pullbacks that we've had over the last two years uh, were both uh, confirmed with highs on the equal weighted as well as the NASDAQ 100. But at this point in time, you can see we're still well off those highs. That is the difference. That's a change of character. We have not seen that in the market in the last, uh, uh, at least for the last couple of years here. So again, something I continue to monitor and I, I, you know, something I continue to warn of. There's no guarantees it'll happen, but when I see this extreme low volatility, this price compression, Bollinger Bands contracting, the VIX down at low levels, uh, usually from out of the blue, uh, whether the catalyst will be some news-driven event or they'll just try to pin some some uh, excuse on, we're going to see a, a sooner or later, I think, a big red candle uh, that comes and wipes out weeks, uh, possibly months, in just a few days of trading. Uh, because again, all it takes when you have this extreme price compression is if I grab where we're at today and I just measure down here and go down just a 2% drop, only a 2% drop would wipe out all these candles going back. Uh, that's 23 candlesticks over a period of 1.1 months. Uh, and that's again just a two percent drop on the on the spy. And you talk about the Nasdaq 100. Uh, let's look at the Qs, and you can see the same thing. I need to get a different board here, but there it is. Uh, let's find a cleaner board. There it is. If the Qs drop just down about two and a half percent right here, you're going to wipe out the last couple weeks of. Uh, price action. So it hasn't happened yet. We don't have anything close to a sell signal, but I did want to point out the the divergences between the equal weighted um, NASDAQ 100 and the regular NASDAQ 100, which applies a heavier weighting to those stocks. All right. Now, uh, so there's not any opportunities, at least at this time that I see in trading the broad markets. I think the risk reward is still very 
the awful to going long. Again, if you're a trend trader and you want to just ride it up with a trailing stop, go ahead and do that. But uh, I don't see any any compelling reason to buy. In fact, I see too many red flags to go long. So that's that's my take. All right, now let's look at some of the things that stand out uh, as as potential trading ops. Uh, energy, particularly the oil and gas equipment and services uh, stocks, that's the one I, you know, stands out to me. We have this beautiful inverse head and shoulders pattern that just continues to to form really nice, nice symmetry with the left shoulder, the head there, and now the right shoulder so far forming really nice. So uh, again, the way I expect this to play out uh, ultimately is a move up to that neckline, uh, pull back or you know some type of reaction there. Uh, and then your next buy signal would be uh, on a breakout above the neckline. And these are my targets. So I expect this one to play out something along these lines here. That's just the measured target for the head and shoulders. But my preferred target right now is about that 2050 area with an initial target around 1850 or so where I expect a reaction. Um, within that sector, I went over some of the standout uh, trading ops last week i only mentioned three and just to be clear if you watch that video last week if you you know listen to what i was trying to say if it wasn't perfectly clear i covered a lot of stocks uh, quite a few of which i said i wouldn't chase at this point i was using those other stocks within the sector to illustrate how how these patterns how these downtrend lines some of these others have these inverse head and shoulders and how they've been playing out and therefore then i focused on the uh, the ones that hadn't yet played out and let's look at those now SN was one I mentioned, one of the three on the video last week, and it has since broken out. So you can see uh, since that video was done, we've had a breakout here. This is the second day trading above the falling wedge. Uh, we do have a first targets not far overhead. That's this line here. And then you have these additional price targets. Uh, so with the sector getting close to that neckline, um, you you know, my guess is we'll, pop, we'll probably see something like this. If this one continues to work its way up here, which I think is a good chance that it will pull back. I don't know how deep that pullback is. It's hard to gauge right now, but we may come in and back test that uh, trend line. Uh, but either way, if we uh, head up there, that's about another. It's still roughly almost 7%, 6 7% up to that first target around 5, uh, 5 10, 5, 15 or so. Uh, so there's some meat left on the bone, and then that would be a pretty powerful buy signal if that gets taken out. But I'd prefer to see a little reaction there first, but you may or may not get that. Some of these energy stocks, when they go, they can really go. So that was SN. I also mentioned uh, last week WFT. WFT had this downtrend line. I need to actually jump down back to a four-year chart. There it is, downtrend line that's been uh, respected uh, a lot of reactions off that trend line. So we zoom back in here and you can see that one continues to move higher uh, since last week. You know, it's, I don't, can't recall exactly where I first highlighted, but it looks like just in the last week or so, it's up another, you know, 12, 13%. And uh, I don't see really much resistance till it gets up here at about 474. And that's still, you know, another 16 or so percent, 16, 17%. Uh, SWN was the third, uh, of the three that I mentioned last week as, you know, stocks in the sector that hadn't yet taken off and still had room to go as well as objective, you know, breakout points. This one being the downtrend line. So you can see today we've taken out that downtrend line. So, uh, you know, kudos for those that caught it. It's up 4.4 and a quarter percent so far. And again, this one, I have that big level at 630. I think we'll probably get a consolidation once we hit that 630. If you're a quick trader, you want to get out. You could also raise stops to protect profits, try to let it run because it could bust through there. But I'm favoring leaning towards a pullback around that 630 area, then an, then ultimately a breakout there and a thrust up to the 713-ish uh, area. And again, this is this is the top of a you know nice basing pattern. That's pretty significant resistance. So if we get that 630, um, look for a pullback. Uh, if some how the sector is just on fire and we smash on through there, then that is your next target around 713. And ultimately, uh, this one has the potential to work its way up to this $9 area. And that would be a pretty, pretty nice game from where we're at right now. All right, a couple others that stand out. We'll just move on in the sector. Uh, covered SWN. Here's TTI. TTI looks good. Uh, we had this uh, nice downtrend line you can see there that was taken out. There's a downtrend line. 
breakout. It's been moving up impulsively since. That also coincided with this nice bull flag pattern. A bull flag is a continuation pattern. Uh, if you take the distance of the flagpole, meaning the impulsive move up to the flag formation, and you add that to the lowest point of the flag, that would give you your estimated price target, which comes right in line with my target here. It's about 375 or so, 380. Uh, so that one has a lot of potential there as well, TTI. Uh, let's see what else. FTK. Flowtech. Uh, divergent low here. Uh, I like this, and I like to see this on a lot of stocks. I like to see an undercut of the previous reaction lows. We had a reaction low back here in early 2016. We broke through there, and normally a lot of traders might see that as a bearish technical event. And on face value it is, but when you undercut and take out those previous lows, but then the stock can snap back and regain it, what that serves to do is, is wash out a lot of the weak hands. All this trading here, you can see the volume surge. I have my volume bars turned down right now, but I can tell you there's a big increase in volume there. That looks like capitulation selling, and that's actually bullish for the stock because it washes out a lot of weak hands. People that were in all the way here and here and here and all the way down and were just going crazy and miserable with this stock, they finally capitulated. So it brings in a new set of buyers into the stock. A lot of people that accumulated down here and are now either you know about break even or positive on the stock and those are, are healthier long-term holders because if you have the people that wrote it all the way down uh, as the stock any stock goes up they're just dying to get out so as a stock rises you have a lot of pent-up frustrated uh, holders that want to sell that's not the case once you get a, a capitulation you know selling climax or a, a washout bottom so i think this one has potential as a bottoming play and again what's nice about it hey if i'm wrong uh you have a pretty nice uh, support level. You can see these reactions down here, about 450 or so. Set a stop on a close below that, daily close. And um, it sounds like a lot, and it is in percentage terms from 515 down to that level. Uh, that's about 11, 12% drop. But if you look at the upside potential now, uh, there's 28, almost you know, almost 30% to that first target. And then ultimately, if we backfill this gap, that's about close to a 60% gain. So see, it's all about risk reward. Just don't put a huge dollar amount into it. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Check for earnings. I didn't scrub this one for earnings yet, uh, but that's just pass along ideas. TESO, Tesco Corp, divergent low. You can see the bullish divergences down here. PPO is starting to curl up. Uh, just a beautiful little undercut. You can see this candle right here or right there. It slightly undercut that previous low and the stock regained it quickly. There, It's been moving up pretty impulsively recently. So this is a bottoming play. And again, um, uh, you know, you can set a stop there below 370, either on an intraday or a daily closing basis, or you can use that previous reaction low that's a little bit lower, about 363. Uh, stock's at 407 right now. And if it makes it up to this previous reaction high, which would be a natural, you know, longer term target, that's about a 40% upside. So a lot of meat on the bone on that one. Uh, PKD, Parker Drilling, uh, low price stock. Be very careful with these low price stocks. Energy sector has been beat down. Uh, a lot of these companies have precarious fundamentals because of the collapse in oil prices in recent years. Uh, you know, by that, the risk could be bankruptcy protection, a filing that comes out of nowhere, uh, share dilution if they issue additional shares to, to, you know, to, to uh, get a little working capital. Uh, that, that could also knock the stock down. And uh, you also want to see a stock maintain above that $1 share level. Otherwise, they risk a uh, delisting if they trade too long below a dollar. So uh, they can try a reverse split and some other shenanigans. But ultimately, you need to see this stock start going. But I like it. You have a divergent low. You can see the bullish divergence. Uh, you have these levels here. Uh, you have both the downtrend line as well as this 109 is a horizontal resistance level. So basically this one needs to pop over 109, say 110 to be safe. First target there is about at, right at 120. That's close to a 10% gain if it hits it. And then you have the next target up here about 140. Uh, so, you know, a lot of potential in this stock if it gets up there, you know, 25, almost 30%. And that's it for the energy sector. Uh, wheat, I mentioned recently. As uh, uh, setting up, uh, I talked about this before. The, the, we've had several trades, swing trading this one in the last couple of years. Uh, the most recent swing trade was uh, was stopped out right here on the daily close below 640. But before it was even stopped out, I mentioned, you know, after this failed attempt 
uh, right here to rally and get up there. It looked as if this one would probably undercut the previous lows, which it has. And I, and I laid out this scenario of putting in a divergent low. You have potential divergence here. The stock, or not the stock, this is a ETN. Wheat has started to reverse. The 60-minute uh, charts look good. Let me show you the chart of uh, wheat futures. Here's that 60-minute chart of ZW, which are wheat futures, divergent low. It's moving up. Uh, so, so far, so good. I'd, I'd like to see a little more evidence before adding this back as an official trade. But for those that you are looking for an idea, especially to diversify so you don't have all your eggs in one basket, all into equities or stocks, you know, especially tech stocks, uh, commodities appear to be uh, pounding out a bottom. And by the way, I'm also going off long term charts. I don't have it on this uh, monitor right now, but I have a, you know, a, 20 year chart of weekly chart of wheat prices and uh, we're at long term just above a long term uh, support line so that's that one has potential there as well um, finally uh, i do want to do the cannabis stocks i'm seeing a lot of recent bullish developments in the cannabis sector i have too many stocks on my watch list to cover in fact this video is a second draft i started to cover this in addition to everything else and i realized that these weren't their own video there's so many but i'm seeing a lot of movement you can see my watch list these are the percentage gainers today alone uh, but this isn't just a one-day thing we're starting to see some volume as well as breakouts technical breakouts and that's why i'm I'll focus on the cannabis stocks in another video. Uh, finally, another one to, to look at. You know, I cut out, uh, I mentioned, made mention the trading room, not sure if any of you caught it. Uh, Thursday, I had to leave right after the market closed. I took my family to Universal Studios. Uh, the kids really wanted to do that Halloween Fright Night thing they have where they, they convert the one of their parks into a, just a bunch of haunted houses and scare tactics and all this. and. Uh, I was I was impressed at how busy it was because talking to all the employees and everybody, it usually drops off after Halloween. Um, the park is usually pretty much empty, and it was at capacity. Wait times for the haunted houses were ranged from about an hour and a, uh, hour and fifteen minutes all the way up to two hours. Um, so the place was packed. The hotel we stayed at was at capacity. You know, I'm only a few hours from, from Universal. So we've been several times in the last few years with my family and, and I'm impressed. And so by that, anytime I see a business doing well, uh, you know, I take a look at the stock and, um, those of you might not know that the Universal Studios as well as their theme parks, they're owned by NBC Universal. Uh, NBC is owned by Comcast. So this is really the uh, company that owns all that stuff. And uh, Comcast looks interesting. Uh, a little work to be done. I'd love to see it come down here to this green line, about 3413. That's where I have the line at. Very nice support. You can see reactions from above, uh, reactions from below. Uh, you can see potential bullish divergence setting up here. Uh, and this is a dividend paying stock. Not a huge dividend, but close to 2%, about 1.8%. Um, you can see it's already dropped since its last divergent high. The stock has fallen uh, about eight, almost 18%. Uh, and that's a you know history of these divergent highs correction, divergent high correction. So I'm looking for a bounce now. This one may have entered a new, it may have embarked on a new secular bear market. And I, as a swing trader, I have no problem with going long. In fact, bear market rallies are some of the most lucrative trading ops. So what I'd be looking for if it gets down there to go long is a bounce back up to this level here. It's about $37. You can see very, very well-defined uh, resistance. And that would be a nice bounce to catch. And even if the stock trades sideways for a while in that range, you're getting paid. So for growth and income investors, I wanted to point this one out. Uh, why do I mention it may be in a new bear market? Well, here's the uh, long-term chart. This is a 10-year weekly chart. Just as with the S&P 500, the stock market as a whole, uh, this one bottomed back in March of 2009 and has had a very well-defined uptrend line since, and it broke down recently. That uh, breakdown, it also came following a divergent high. You can see the negative divergences back here, extremely overbought. And so, uh, however, again, if it's a, if it happens to be in a new secular bear market, they're very early stages, um, then what I would expect is if I can get that entry down there a little bit more downside, maybe this one kicks back to back test the uh, trend line and then ultimately moves lower. This is a weekly chart. So if I saw this, this scenario I'm highlighting here, uh, this would be my worst case bear market target as of now. 
and I always say the charts are dynamic and so is my analysis. If things change, then my analysis will change. But I'm talking this could be a year or more, you know, a couple years even plus uh, to get down to this level, about 25 or so. That would be a great level to buy. Uh, go long Comcast if it gets there. But whether it does or not, these are long term charts. This helps formulate a longer term plan. Swing trading, I'm looking at the daily and 60 minute chart. So here, here's a 60-minute chart on um, Comcast. You can see nice uh, a falling wedge. There's a downtrend line, fairly well-defined divergent low right here. It's actually a consecutive divergent low. If I added, a, you can see that we had bullish divergence right there, uh, with the indicators making higher lows against uh, prices making lower lows, and we did get a pop there. And so this is just an extension of those divergences. So this one may not make it down all the way to that target here that I'm looking at, but that would be a nice buy zone if it gets close to that 34.13. I'd step in a little early. And again, just for a, uh, a bounce trade, a swing trade, because that's what this market, uh, you know, it's not been the broad market itself isn't conducive to swing trading, but most certainly individual stocks and sectors have been because it's been a market just plagued or marked with sector rotation money moving in and out of different sectors as the market slowly does its thing and grinds higher there have been vicious bear markets within many stocks even many sectors within the broad market within this larger secular bull market so uh, and again that's what swing trading is all about focus on the most bullish and bearish sectors then drill down within that sector to find the most bullish and bearish individual stocks um, you know commodities any other opportunities so that's that's what stands out to me now i'll wrap it up here and uh, I'll try to do a separate video covering the uh, marijuana stocks later.